400 British school children are rescued as their Greek cruise ship collides with an oil tanker and sinks. British Airways goes to the United States to buy a billion pounds worth of airliners. Israel's revenge, 49 dead or injured in air attacks on Palestinian refugee camps in Lebanon. America charges ex-president Marcos with multi-million dollar fraud and embezzlement. And East and West work together to try to save the whales. Good evening. More than 400 British school children have been rescued after their Greek cruise liner collided with a cargo ship and sank off the port of Piraeus this afternoon. At least two people, one of them a Greek sailor, were killed. The number of injured is put at 72. Most of the school children are reported to be shocked but safe after a massive rescue operation involving army helicopters and fishing boats. The youngsters from schools all over Britain were heading from Piraeus to the island of Rhodes on board the 7,000-ton liner Jupiter. Sixty of them jumped into the sea. The ship's owners say the rescue operation was swift and successful. Chris West has just sent this report from Athens. The treasure cruiser Jupiter had just left harbour when she was struck by an Italian freighter. Water rushed in through a gash in her port side and she began to sink. The school children were eating in the restaurant. Their teachers have said this is why they were able to gather them together so quickly. Some of the children jumped into the sea to be rescued by a fleet of tugs and other small boats. Others were taken off the deck by army helicopters. They were brought ashore, wrapped in blankets, dazed and obviously frightened. Many of them wept in the arms of their rescuers. Helicopters and boats are still searching in the darkness. The Greek shipping minister has said that two people are known to have died. One of them has been identified as a member of the ship's crew. The other one has still to be identified. The British vice consul in Athens is in the port now and is checking on the passenger list. It's not known whether anyone could be trapped in the wreckage of the ship, which now lies at the bottom of the harbour. This is Chris West for the 9 o'clock news in Athens. It's known that there were children from at least three British schools on board the 6,300-ton Jupiter. The schools named so far are the Two Trees Secondary School in Denton near Manchester, Brown Hills Secondary Modern School near Wolverhampton, and the Chase Cross School near Romford in Essex. According to the company which owns the Jupiter, though, there are children on board from schools all over the country. When the collision occurred, it was what was described as a beautiful evening with calm, warm seas and good visibility. Most of those on board the Jupiter were on deck as she left the port, and so the owners say they think there'll have been few trapped in the body of the ship. As a company spokesman explained to me a short time ago uh, from Greece, they have no reliable figures yet as to who's been injured or is still missing. Well, on the process of making a tally of uh, the people that have been there ashore and uh, whoever has been injured, we don't have any figures yet. How long do you think it'll be before you do know? Well. Soon, I hope, within the next hour, I hope to start having something. Now, I understand one of your own vessels was there very quickly. Yes, the Oceanus was next to it, you see. It launched its boats and tried to pick up as many passengers as possible. At the same time, we have another passenger ship, the Pegasus, which is uh, docked in the port of Paris, and we're using it as a, as a relief center. It's a luxurious uh, cruise ship, and we're taking everybody there, you see, to give them whatever assistance and help they may require. So the injured and uh, the not-so-injured? Well, the the not-so-injured, I would say, and the rescued are being taken there. The, the so-so-injured, or the more seriously injured, taken to the hospital. Well, a few minutes ago, one of the school children from the Chase Cross School in Romford, who is uninjured, told us on the telephone from hospital in Paris what had happened when the Jupiter and the tanker collided. Well, we were in the dining room having a talk with our teacher, and like, there was a load of kids with us, and um, all of a sudden we heard this smash, and everybody jolted forward. There was another boat collided with our boat, and there was a ten-foot hole in the side. Everybody was helping each other. And did you jump into the sea? Yes, after them jumped in the sea and there was boats to rescue us. It was frightening. And there is an emergency number for parents who, or relatives who might want more details. That's 0444-441300. That number again, 0444-441300.
double O. And there is also a foreign office number which is manned. That is 01270-3000. 3000. We will, of course, bring you more information at the end of the program. Injured, most of the children are said to be shocked but safe after a huge rescue operation. One survivor said the collision happened as the children were gathering for a meal in the ship's dining room. Well, on the line from Athens now is our correspondent, Chris West. Chris, what is the latest news from the scene? I've just spoken to a British Embassy official here, and we must express some caution, but he says the first reports indicate that all the British school children have now been accounted for, so this would appear that none of them are dead. We're not clear how serious the injuries are. The first reports are that most of them uh, are not serious. All the children are very shocked, of course. Uh, on a ship of this size, it's easier to check out the passenger manifest. We're not going to have a repeat, I hope, of the problems we had after the city of Poros disaster in July when nobody knew for some days uh, who was trapped, who was dead, and who was missing. So uh, at the moment, it appears like relatively good news. Chris, it sounds as though they have had a remarkably lucky escape. They have indeed. They were very lucky to be so close to the shore, just a few hundred yards. Uh, in the port of Piraeus at this time of the evening, of course, it's the most crowded uh, time of the day. There are little ships dotting in and out all over the place, so there was no shortage of rescuers. Uh, a couple of the Eporetiki line uh, ships were close on hand as well. Uh, they were able to launch their lifeboats very quickly. And, of course, the Greek authorities have learned uh, a huge lesson from the last disaster we had only those few months ago. Chris West in Athens, thank you very much indeed. And as we said earlier, there are two emergency numbers for anyone wanting details of the school children involved. Schools abroad who organize the trip can be contacted on 0444 441300. That's manned right through the night, and it's 0444 441300. And there's also a foreign office number manned as well. That is 01270 3000. 01270 3000. We will, of course, bring you more information about the collision during the evening here on BBC One. 400 British school children are saved when their ship sinks. Two people are dead, 64 hurt after the Greek liner is holed. The Barlow Clouds investors wait for city and government help. British Airways buys a billion pounds worth of Boeing. And Israel takes its revenge on the Palestinian guerrillas. Good evening. Hundreds of British schoolchildren have been rescued tonight when their cruise liner sank off the Greek coast. It's now thought at least two people died and 64 more were hurt when the cruise ship Jupiter collided with an Italian cargo ship just outside Piraeus, the port of Athens. Many of the children had to jump into the water. Apparently they had no life belts and they were rescued by a fleet of small craft. Some children are in hospital suffering from shock, but the Greek embassy in London says all were alive and accounted for. The Jupiter, 7,000 tons, was about 25 years old. She was carrying the children on an educational cruise to the island of Rhodes. But just after clearing the harbour, the Jupiter was hit by the Italian vehicle carrier Adige coming into Piraeus, which slammed into her port side amidships. Simon Marks in London summarises tonight's reports. There was chaos on the dockside at Piraeus tonight as survivors were ferried to safety. Trawlers, fishing vessels and another liner acted as rescue boats, hurrying the shocked children to dry land. Crew members too were helped, but it was the children who were most in need. My God, they're all small kids, said one doctor working on the scene. Despite the shock, many were able to walk to waiting ambulances. The wounded were carefully placed on stretchers. This woman, like the others, badly shaken by her ordeal. Rescue vehicles hurried to hospitals across Athens, all on full alert. As more trawlers arrived, the scale of the accident became clear. The children had been preparing to eat in the ship's dining room. In the panic, many jumped into the sea. With plenty of boats in the harbour, the rescue operation began quickly, but in the dark it was simply impossible to find everybody. Some of the youngsters were simply overcome by what had happened. Okay. 
The rescue boats kept on arriving, small huddles of children, some with their teachers, gathering together to keep warm. Many were wrapped in blankets. They gathered at the side of the boat, anxious for rescue. They were helped to safety. Back on dry land, what had happened started to sink in. A long crocodile line of children now passed along the dockside. Also teachers and crew members from both ships. They were placed on buses. For many, mixed feelings now of both relief and fear. Some found friends in the crowd. It was clear that most had survived. A spokesman for the liner's shipping company told ITN most of the passengers were safe. They were picked up immediately, almost instantly. I mean, uh, the water was calm, the water was 18 degrees, and uh, I don't think anybody spent more than 10 minutes in the water. But uh, a very large number was taken directly off the ship to tugboats, which were alongside, you see, and they were just transferred from one to the other without getting their feet wet. But uh, quite a few, of course, jumped into the water, but they were picked up almost instantly. There were flares, there was lights from uh, spotlights all over and floodlights. So as far as that is concerned, thank God, that went uh, very smoothly. And a short time ago, some were able to speak of their ordeal. There was quite a bit of panic. And people just were trying to get out frantically. And a few, a few people stayed to help. They opened the windows. People climbed out through the windows and were uh, uh, led along the banister, the railings, to safety. And then the barges came and picked us up. Nobody seemed to know what to do, really. And then everyone um, tried to get out through windows and they slid down the floor to get out of the door. And we climbed upstairs and out onto the deck on the railings. And the boat just started going over and over, and it's getting really difficult to hold on. And then it just sort of settled, and everyone was getting off, and we thought we were going to get off. And then all of a sudden, it just started going under. And there were about 40 people left on board, and I was one of them. And, um, and the water, it, was just, it just sunk so quickly after that, and I, I just jumped out and was picked up by a barge and taken they were very good, very brave, the crew were very good, the headmaster on the ship was very good, everybody was calm, all the tugs came in and people moved off onto the tugs. At the end, apparently, it did tip over and some of the children had to jump. But I was away by then, I don't know. But apparently, everybody's off and safe. And we just want to know that our families know that everybody is safe. There are two emergency telephone numbers tonight for people worried about their children. The first is schools abroad. They're at Haywards Heath on 0 treble 4 double 4 1 3 double 0. That's 0 treble 4 double four one three double oh and at the foreign office there are two emergency numbers oh one if you're calling from outside london two seven oh four treble one or oh one two seven oh four double one two just to repeat those oh one two seven oh four treble one or oh one two seven oh four double one two a few moments ago, one of the rescued girls, a 15-year-old from Romford in Essex, told ITN her story. We were sitting in the lounge, ready for someone to talk to us, and um, all of a sudden, uh, something hit us. Like we heard this bang. What happened then? Um, the lights went out, and everyone started sliding down to the end of the lounge. And uh, people were screaming and crying, and um, I managed to crawl up from the other end up until this little exit that was going up onto the deck where everyone was. 
What were the crew doing to help you? Nothing. They got off before us. They had their life jackets on. We didn't have anything. They got off before on this little boat and they left us on there. And there's four of you in hospital. Are any of you hurt? Um, well, Karen's just hurt her arm. And are the rest of you all right? Yeah. But like, we're all in this lounge, like, having a talk about where we were going. And uh, all of a sudden we heard this crash in the side of the boat. We all jumped to one side. And, uh, like, the, like, the teachers like to say, like, keep calm and everything. So we all sat there. Then all the crew went outside. We, did, we couldn't see any. Then the boat was tilted to one side. And then all of a sudden it tilted really fast and the lights went out. And, um, like, like, the teachers, like, we was all climbing through the windows and through the doors and trying to get out. Did you get any life jackets? No, we couldn't find many. And here, police and the Foreign Office have been inundated with calls from hundreds of anxious parents. The children aboard the Jupiter came from schools all over Britain who'd organised trips with the Sussex-based company Schools Abroad. Tonight, parents and children gathered at the Two Trees School in Manchester to hear the latest news about the 30 children from the school on the Jupiter. Four hours into the accident, we, we, if it was bad, we'd be getting bad news through, bad information, yeah. I think. We'd be getting that. I'm sure we would. I'm... Friends of the pupils on the ship who were waiting at the school were in tears. <clears throat> My heart at the moment is saying that they're fine. I'd, I'd, I'd refuse to look on the black side. Uh, and hopefully this information will come through from an emergency number to say that, that the kids are all right, hopefully, you know. In London, a statement was read on behalf of the visiting Greek Prime Minister, Mr Papandreou. Prime Minister Andrea Papandreou has given orders for the fastest completion of the rescue work now underway. He expresses the deep grief for the total unexpected and unlikely accident at the port of Piraeus. Anxious parents in Catford were trying to find out about their children from the Prendergast Girls' School. Your daughter Paula is, is how old and what was she? She's 14. 14. Yeah. And she goes to Prendergast School. But would you think she might ring you? I shouldn't think she'd ring us, no. no. They'd probably tied up their teachers and do anything at all. She could even be in hospital, actually. We don't, we don't really know. Did you ever have any worries about her going on this trip? Oh, no. None at all. No. None at all. But it's a worrying time for you, obviously, at the moment. It is at the moment, yes. Oh, yes. But the latest reports are that uh, the children are all right. The children are all safe, apparently, yes. There's one of there's some injured, but they're all safe off the boat. Further news about the children shortly have minor injuries. All 391 children, together with 81 teachers and helpers, were rescued within minutes of the liner being hit by an Italian cargo ship off the port of Piraeus, the port of Athens. Two men, both members of the ship's crew were killed. The children from all over Britain were travelling with the Sussex group Schools Abroad. A few minutes ago, Schools Abroad said they were sending a plane to bring them all home. Good evening. Nearly 400 British school children were among those on board the Greek cruise ship Jupiter when it was in collision with an Italian freighter just off the port of Piraeus. The Jupiter sank quickly, but many of the teenage children and crew jumped over the side. The situation is still confused. The Greek embassy in London say all the children have been accounted for, and the shipping line say that as far as they know, most of the passengers are safe. But rescue workers say some were trapped in the ship as it went down. Ships have been rescuing survivors, and scores of them have been disembarked wrapped in blankets. Many of them tell harrowing stories of their ordeal as they jumped from the ship after it had been rammed from behind. I'll be asking the experts how anything like this could have happened just a mile from the Greek coast in daylight. Also tonight, Mrs Thatcher, in talks with the Italian Prime Minister, says it again and stronger. No to European political integration. No to a European central bank. The Foreign Secretary, who was with her on the trip, will be telling us just how far apart Britain and her partners are on these and other issues. And ten days before Israel decides its future at the polls, David Sells examines the uprising on the West Bank through the eyes of the Palestinians. 
It seems that a largely successful rescue operation has been carried out after a Greek cruise liner sank just off the coast near Piraeus, the port of Athens, at around 3 o'clock this afternoon. 391 British schoolchildren were on board on an educational trip organised by the group Schools Abroad. They were accompanied by 81 teachers and helpers. Their Greek cruise liner collided with an Italian cargo ship and sank very quickly. Two people are reported dead and the number of injured has been put at 72. A statement issued by the Greek Embassy in London tonight says that all the school children on board are accounted for. The vessel, the 6,300 tonne Jupiter, was on its way to the holiday island of Rhodes when it collided with the freighter nearly two miles outside the harbour mouth. Panic-stricken teenagers who jumped from the sinking ship were plucked from the sea by the Greek coast guards. Well, Jill Neville in London has been following events. Passengers rescued from the Jupiter were brought into nearby Piraeus Harbour by a flotilla of small boats. After their ordeal, some showed obvious signs of distress. The Jupiter took 20 minutes to sink after colliding with an Italian container ship. That time allowed most passengers to escape, some by jumping overboard, others directly onto waiting boats. Latest reports tonight indicate two seamen lost their lives. All the British children on board are now accounted for, though some are injured. The 400 or so British children and their teachers were on an educational cruise and came from 30 schools all over the country. For some, it was their first trip abroad. Others had only arrived in Athens last night. The passengers who'd escaped injury were taken to shelter by a fleet of coaches. The injured were taken to hospital. There they described what had happened. A boat went into our boat, and uh, yeah, a bigger boat went into our boat, and it just killed over to one side, and we were all in a room, and the water just hit one side, and we all had to scramble out <laughs> to get to the deck, and then we just, then the boat went nearly all the way over, and we just had to jump off. Well, we was in the, the dining room, and you heard like a bang, and they said they saw all go upstairs, and so on the wall with our water coming through it and it went upstairs and like it was tipping to the side and never was trying to hang on. That's all I remember. I'm just very thankful to God that we are we, we managed to, to get down. We, hu we hung on to the bow, to the deck rail and, sim and we made our way along the deck rail and then we slid down and we're handed by the seamen who were very kind. We were handed onto a sort of uh, barge and from a barge onto a, a tug. Tonight the Jupiter lies in nearly 300 feet of water. It's still not clear if anyone is still trapped inside. Flares are being fired to illuminate the scene as rescue attempts continue. Well, a few moments ago the trip's organizers, schools abroad in Sussex, announced that they were sending a plane to Athens to bring the children home. And so tonight, the nightmare for their parents appears to be over. But as the first news of the collision reached Britain, headmasters and staff at the schools concerned had the unenviable job of informing parents. With precious little firm information, all they could do was make anxious phone calls and wait. The majority of the schoolchildren are from schools in the West Midlands. Gary Hudson has been to the main two of them. Almost 100 children from three schools in Warsaw were among those on the cruise ship. As soon as first news of the sinking was broadcast, worried parents and friends arrived at the schools in the hope of finding out what had happened. Staff who'd just started their half-term holiday came back to work to help, but information was at first hard to come by. And then all I've got to go on at the moment is the DVC, and as you may imagine, 29 frantic parents. She's withdrawn, I saw Zoe Hyde and I was talking to oh, her. Thank God for that. I've well, better just check just to be yeah. sure, but I'm sure I was talking to her. Teachers and school secretaries checked lists of children to make sure all parents knew what was happening. Thank you very much, yes, thanks, bye-bye. Mr Hunt, what's been the response from parents? Well, obviously shock, and they've uh, come into school as rapidly as possible as we've requested them to and we've uh, set up a room for them and doing our best to look after them while we establish what the situation is. What else can you do? Um, do our best to keep in touch with the tour firm and to make sure we've contacted all parents. We're having a great deal of help from the police and from organisations such as yourselves and getting as much information as we can. We've had uh, a number of some of our secretarial staff come in to assist in making coffee and provide comfort 
which is really what's mattering most of all at the moment. And obviously they're supporting each other. Uh, it's a very difficult time for them. There are quite a number of younger brothers and sisters who are here because we've had a disco on it in the school and clearly that's adding to, to the concern because the younger children do tend to get even more distressed. But we're doing what we can. After almost three hours of anxiety, the teachers now have the task of breaking news that's much happier than they'd once feared. Well, I'm joined from Athens by our correspondent in Greece, Chris West. Uh, Chris, are you hearing me all right? Yes, Peter, I am. Now, first of all, is it quite certain that all the school children are safe, as far as you know? Nothing at this stage can be considered to be certain, no. Um, I've spoken to a British Embassy official here, and he said as far as he knows, none of the school children is believed to have come to serious harm. Although there are two consular officials in the Port of Piraeus at the moment checking the passenger list. But uh, as sad experience on the city of Poros disaster in July has taught us, you can never count your chickens. We, we just don't know at this moment. There's always a possibility that, that uh, somebody could be missing. Now, are the British officials there, indeed all the ones, people you've talked to, also talking about the British teachers? Are they also reckoned to be safe? Again, nothing can be certain. There are a number of people in hospital, around 60 people in hospital. We understand more than 30 of them are school children. Obviously, those others who are hurt will be school teachers uh, and crew members. There were about 120 crew members on board the ship. The, the breakdown of figures isn't complete yet. There's always the possibility that teachers and school children could be injured, could be missing. Now, Chris. A little earlier, some of the rescuers were saying that some people had been trapped on board the ship when the ship sank. It was not quite clear whether all of them were thought to be crew members or indeed whether, whether that is still the position that, the, that some people were trapped on board when it sank. It would seem that most of the people who were trapped would be crew members. They would have been the ones below decks when the accident happened, uh, the ones who would have been trapped by the force of the collision itself. Uh, the great majority, in fact, if not all, the school teachers and the school children were on the upper decks in the restaurant, luckily enough, having, having their, their dinner. And so they're able to get off the ship pretty quickly. Are you clear at, uh, what, five, six hours away from the disaster now, exactly what happened? Chris, we understand, don't we, that the freighter's captain has been charged with manslaughter tonight. He's been arrested, certainly, uh, and he, he has been charged. It's a, it's a technical charge. It always happens in, in these uh, circumstances. Whenever there's a, a maritime incident like this, the captain will be charged, uh, and this uh, can't impute any, any blame or otherwise to him at the moment. It's, it's a procedural thing. Certainly, he was arrested the moment his ship came back into harbour, and an inquiry has begun. Senior government ministers, Greek government ministers, are in the port at the moment, and uh, they're looking in, into just what did happen. Chris West, thank you very much indeed. Well, now, we have two phone numbers for you. If you want to make inquiries, if you're worried about uh, any of the teachers or school children on board, you should ring uh, 0444 41300. 0444 441300, that is the emergency telephone number for schools abroad. There's also a foreign office number in London, 01 if you're dialing from outside London, 270-3000. That's 01 if you're outside London, 270-3000. That's the foreign office uh, in London. Well, now I'm joined here in the studio by David Mott, who is a journalist and expert on shipping, uh, who writes for the Lloyd's List. David Mott, first of all, is this a busy area? How could a collision like this have happened in daylight? Well, Piraeus is probably one of, the, one of the busiest maritime areas in the whole world. I think what happens, and this is something that needs a great deal of thought, ships collide when they cross each other. The reason they cross each other is that they come and go to different berths. Cargo ships go to cargo berths, passenger ships to passenger berths. Now, if their route to the sea from these respective berths actually takes them across each other, you only have to have bad weather or any, any other adverse factor and you have a potential disaster. What is the safety record of ships in Greek waters, Greek cruise ships in Greek waters? Well, in fact, Greek ships and all Western cruise ships have a very, very good safety record. The one exception, in fact, to the whole cruise ship market is the Russians, which have had uh, two or three really rather serious accidents in the last two or three years. But Western operators have been very successful. And are you clear how she could have sunk so quickly? 
The freighter appears, from what we read, to have come from behind the cruise ship and rammed the ship in the stern. Well, of course, there's no question in a ship like the Jupiter of uh, bow doors or stern doors, she is a genuine cruise ship. Um, I can only assume that she was damaged, hold heavily below the waterline, uh, in which case then 20 minutes doesn't seem an unreasonable time for her to sink, although current regulations being drawn up for ferries and indeed for cruise ships are aiming to give at least half an hour. And that is time enough, is it, to get a lot of, lot of passengers into boats? Well, it's, it's pretty quick, but it's reckoned to be a, a reasonable margin, yes. What do you think is the uh, implication of the fact that we're here tonight, only five, six hours after the disaster, that the skipper of the freighter has been charged? Well, I think the implication must be that the cargo ship cut across the cruise ship. Uh, in a sense, it's a bit like steam giving way to sail. Um, she is a big ship. Um, cargo ships always tend to take a more rogue course, if you like. They are freer spirits than cruise ships, which have a very predetermined course. So if there is to be blamed, I, su I suspect that it would be the cargo ship skipper who would uh, receive that blame. And finally, uh, David Mott, back to those people who are listening tonight wondering what has happened to uh, loved ones who were on the cruise that they know. Uh, what do you make of the various reports we're getting out of Athens? Would you, will you get the impression now that we can safely say that it looks pretty likely that all the school children and teachers are at least safe, even if some of them are in hospital. It seems that is the case. It is remarkable there's been so few casualties among the school children. And it was interesting that Chris West, said, Chris West said that they were in the restaurant, which means that they were high up in the ship. And that probably accounts for this minimal loss of life. David Moore, thank you very much. And I have one telephone number to correct. I'm afraid we were given the wrong number for the Foreign Office in London. The correct number is 2704111. That's, if you're dialing from outside London, 01270 Sorry about that. Would that be... The news from ITM. The cruise ship children come home, but one girl is still missing. Some of the 475 children and teachers rescued from Athens Harbour have left Greece. Four special flights are bringing the survivors back to Gatwick and Stansted. One girl, 14-year-old Vivian Barley from Sutton Coldfield, is still missing. The Jupiter cruise ship sank off Piraeus after being hit by an Italian cargo ship. The Italian captain has been arrested for manslaughter. Two Greek crewmen were killed. They were crushed to death as they tried to get tugboat lines to the Jupiter. One woman passenger has lost a leg. Nearly 600 passengers and crew were rescued. The Pegasus is the identical sister ship of the Jupiter which sank last night. Today she was emergency home for the Jupiter's rescued passengers. Many still dressed in blankets, all their possessions lost with the sunken cruise liner. The passengers, mostly schoolchildren, spent the night in hospital, most suffering from shock after being forced to jump into the sea. But others suffered leg injuries diving onto the decks of rescue ships. Teachers praised the youngsters for their calm. I was praying, and when uh, the party of girls assembled in the little tug where I was, I organized prayer. Yes. Using that helped? Now, we said a decade of the rosary, yes, I'm sure, yes, I'm sure, I'm sure it, it did. Helped. And it calmed them immensely. Yep. Throughout the night, by the light of flares, the search continued for the one missing girl. This morning, she was still unaccounted for. I'm not sure whether she's been lost or can be reported as dead. She's still reported as missing. We're still checking at the hospitals and everywhere else. The Jupiter was the same size as her sister ship, the Pegasus, here. She sank so quickly because she was holed both above and below the waterline. The captain of the Italian freighter, who was arrested last night, has now been charged with manslaughter. The damaged Italian freighter is being held in Piraeus Harbour while the police investigation continues. Late this morning, the first group of young passengers from the Jupiter were escorted to Athens Airport, where four jets had been sent from Britain to carry them home. Paul Davis, ITN, Athens. It was a long night for the parents. At this Manchester school, they kept the tea brewing as they waited. 38 pupils and 11 members of staff from the school were on the trip. At 1 a.m., the phone rang. All were safe, although two children had to be taken to hospital with shock and the school nurse has hurt her leg. I think I did half a bottle of scotch last night and 200 fags. It was that sort of thing. Absolutely. And, of course, um, 
You know that relief? I mean, we got a phone call from Greece at one o'clock this morning f from the, the lady from the shipping lines that says your daughter's safe. <sighs> My God. But a different mood in Sutton Coalfield as they wait for news of the one missing pupil, 14-year-old Vivian Barley, who, according to some reports, was last seen as she jumped into the water. And a medical team have flown out from Gatwick. They checked the youngsters over this morning before they set out for home. According to independent observers, the Pirotiki, who operate the Jupiter, seen here leaving Piraeus Harbour, have a good safety record. On yesterday's cruise, there was no time to give the school children gathered in the lounge the customary safety demonstration before the collision happened in the busy shipping lanes just outside Piraeus Harbour. There is a certain conflict between the, the tracks, that is, the courses that are taken by cruise ships, and uh, they tend to be cut across by cargo ships. Um, but I don't know that that is a fact, but it wouldn't surprise me if this is what happened. Emergency drills have been carried out on the Jupiter, and today the Greek Prime Minister reacted angrily to allegations of overcrowded shipping lanes and poor safety on board. It was not a question of overcrowded shipping lanes. It was a question of a captain not knowing what he was doing. So you're saying it was in one individual's negligence? Yes, indeed. This morning, the captain of the Italian freighter that hit the Jupiter is under arrest for manslaughter. Other news... From the newsroom of TVS, the lunchtime news for the South. Good afternoon. Teachers and children from Hampshire and Sussex caught up in the Greek shipping tragedy are expected to arrive home later today. 43 children and four teachers from schools near Southampton and Lansing were on the ship. More than 470 people were aboard the Greek cruiser Jupiter when it was rammed by an Italian freight ship. Two Greek crewmen died and one British schoolgirl is still missing. Today, the headmaster of Hansden Secondary School at Totten was busy dealing with anxious parents. His pupils left the school early yesterday morning for the week-long cruise. The information we received direct from Greece last night was that our party of children and staff were safe and uninjured. What's been the parents' reaction so far? Mostly the ones I've spoken to this morning, tremendous relief. Um, they all had a pretty uh, awful few hours yesterday evening, as we all did, waiting for news bulletins. The 23 teenagers from the Banston Community College at Lansing had saved for two years to go on the educational cruise. One teacher and two pupils were taken to hospital in Athens. Six policemen were in... The news from ITM. The survivors from the Greek cruise ship are back in Britain as hopes fade for the missing schoolgirl. The Greek government says it now presumes that 14-year-old Vivian Barley from Sutton Coalfield is dead. She was last seen by school friends swimming in the harbour as the cruise ship Jupiter sank off Piraeus after a collision with an Italian cargo ship. The Italian government says the DJ cargo ship was not moving at the time of the accident. The Greeks have arrested the Italian captain for manslaughter. Two Greek crewmen were crushed to death. Four specially chartered planes began arriving at Stansted and Gatwick this afternoon with over 400 children and teachers from the Jupiter. The Pegasus, identical sister ship of the Jupiter which sank last night, was today an emergency home for the Jupiter's rescued passengers. Many of those pulled from the sea were still dressed in blankets, all their possessions lost with the sunken cruise liner. Without doubt, many of the young Britons owed their lives to the local sailors and the fleet of small boats that turned out to help the stricken liner. They spent the night in hospitals, most suffering from shock after their time in the water. Some had injured their legs diving onto the decks of rescue ships. While lists of the survivors were drawn up, calls to reassure worried relatives. I was taken off and, I, and my watch stopped when I, you know, was under water. But, you know, we got wet. There were very different accounts of the rescue operation. And then the boat started tipping and we, like, we went upstairs and, like, the boat was slanting and everyone was just panicking and running off. Several of us, you know, told them that there was nothing to worry about, just to calm them down, and they, they were pretty good, really. The party of girls assembled in the little tug where I was. I organised prayer. Yes. You think we, that helped? Now, we said a decade of the rosary, sure it, yes, I'm sure, sure it, it did. And it calmed them immensely. Throughout the night, by the light of flares, the search continued for the one missing girl. Although several people thought they'd seen her being rescued, today she was still unaccounted for. We're not sure. 
whether she's been lost or can be reported as dead. She's still reported as missing. We're still checking at the hospitals and everywhere else. Piraeus is a busy port, but visibility was good yesterday evening. There's no explanation as to why the frigate failed to see the Jupiter as she left port. The Jupiter was the same size as her sister ship, the Pegasus, here. She sank so quickly because she was holed both above and below the waterline. The captain of the Italian freighter, who was arrested last night, has now been charged with manslaughter. With a police escort, the Jupiter's passengers were transported from the docks to Athens airport late this morning. Four jets have been flown in from Britain to carry them home. From a few angry accusations that they'd been let down by the liner's crew. What? The great crew deserves us! As the planes prepared to leave, the Greek authorities admitted there was practically no hope of finding the missing girl alive. Paul Davis... I... The first of the specially chartered planes touched down two hours ago at Gatwick Airport. Every effort was made to save the youngsters more strain. Customs officers went on the aircraft, then the children were shepherded into waiting coaches with the blinds drawn. There were ambulances for the injured, but for the parents of Vivian Barley, still missing, the grief and suspense goes on. They told how they thought they had seen their daughter on television being rescued, and they went to bed believing she was safe. Then at 3 a.m., a police inspector woke them. They went to Central Television in Birmingham and saw more pictures, but this time they couldn't see Vivian. Even now, they haven't given up hope. One of the teachers actually seen her jump off the ship. So somebody actually then seeing her in the water has confirmed that to us. Our hope at the moment is that if she's in the water and she's swimming, then at that stage, uh, everything was fine. What's happened since then, we really don't know. For all the parents, it was a long night. At this Manchester school, they kept the tea brewing while they waited. 38 pupils and 11 staff from here were on the trip. Late into the night, the phone rang. All were safe, although two children were treated for shock and the school nurse has leg injuries. I think I did half a bottle of scotch last night and 200 fags. It was that sort of thing. Absolutely. And, of course, um, you know that relief? I mean, we got a phone call from Greece at 1 o'clock this morning from the, the lady from the shipping lines that says your daughter's safe. <sighs> My God. And good news, too, for the Stavrou family, whose daughter Stephanie was one of the last to leave the yeah, ship. Okay. She told me at the time that uh, her complaint was against the crew for not helping the children. Uh, she saw them, in fact, uh, living with life belts and lifeboats, whereas they were stuck in the dark, you know, fumbling their way out. Um, she felt strongly about that. She was very angry. According to independent observers, Iripo Tiki, who operate the Jupiter, seen here leaving Piraeus Harbour, have a good safety record. Today, the crew's organisers denied reports that crew members grabbed life jackets and left school children to fend for themselves. Schools abroad said they were more than satisfied by safety on the ship. Many children were in the upper lounge, ready for a safety lecture that was never delivered because of the collision. Others were on a lower deck in a dining room, preparing for their first meal on board. There is a certain conflict between the, the tracks, that is, the courses that are taken by cruise ships, and uh, they tend to be cut across by cargo ships. Um, but I don't know that that is a fact, but it wouldn't surprise me if this is what happened. Emergency drills have been carried out on the Jupiter, and today the Greek Prime Minister reacted angrily to allegations of overcrowded shipping lanes and poor safety on board. It was not a question of overcrowded shipping lanes. It was a question of a captain not knowing what he was doing. So you're saying it was one individual's negligence? Yes, indeed. This afternoon, the Italian shipping ministry said the freighter was hit by the Jupiter and not the other way round, which doesn't explain the damage to the freighter's bows. Other news... From the newsroom of TVS, the evening news for the South. Good evening. Teachers and children caught up in the Greek shipping tragedy arrived back at Gatwick this afternoon and are now on their way back to their homes in Hampshire and Sussex. 43 children and four adults from schools near Southampton and Lansing escaped from the Greek cruiser Jupiter when it sunk after being rammed. One girl is presumed drowned and a woman is thought to have lost a leg. The headmaster of Hansden Secondary School at Totten is waiting for the coaches to arrive back at the school. They only left yesterday morning for the week-long cru cruise. The information we received direct from Greece last night was that our party of children and staff were safe and uninjured. 
What's been the parents' reaction so far? Mostly the ones I've spoken to this morning, tremendous relief. Um, they all had a pretty uh, awful few hours yesterday evening, as we all did, waiting for news bulletins. The 23 teachers from the Boundston Community College at Lansing had saved for two years to go on the educational cruise. One teacher and two pupils needed hospital treatment, but were later released. Six the news from ITM. Hugs and tears as the cruise children come home safely. But tonight, news that a teacher is still unaccounted for. The schoolgirl still missing. The Greeks say she's presumed dead. And in Alaska, fears for one of the whales as the rescue goes on. Good evening. It's been reported in the past few minutes that a teacher on the cruise liner which sank in Greece is unaccounted for. He's Mr. Bernard Butt, a party leader with a group from a school in Walsall. It was only when the group boarded their special flight home that it was discovered that he was missing. All but one of the children from the cruise are back home tonight with their parents. Still missing is 14-year-old Vivian Barley from Sutton Coalfield. Her friends last saw her swimming in Athens Harbour. The Greek government says she's presumed dead. Two Greek crewmen from the cruise liner Jupiter were crushed to death as they tried to attach ropes from a tugboat. The Italian captain, whose cargo ship is said to have rammed the Jupiter, is under arrest in Athens. But the Italians say the cargo ship was not moving at the time. Here, Mrs Thatcher and the Education Secretary, Mr Baker, have joined in widespread praise of the Greek rescue operation. The 390 children and 80 adults arrived home on four special charter flights. This should have been the first full day of a week-long educational cruise. Sarah Cullen reports. As the specially chartered planes touched down, the youngsters were shepherded straight into waiting coaches with the blinds drawn. Parents who had been asked to wait at the schools, not the airports, were talked with the suspense. And then the terrible hours of waiting were over. The children, some still wrapped in blankets, shocked and drawn from the horror of their ordeal, fell into their parents' arms. Many of these Bromley children crumpled into tears, the brave faces they put on for the public collapsing. It was the same story at Folkestone. Parents and children clinging together in relief. We found a boat and we, everybody was climbing over everybody else and pushing and shoving and we managed to get into this boat. So we're OK. What about you, Katie? I jumped into the water. I swam to the boat, but the thing is, the life jackets weren't very good, so I had to hold on to the life jacket rather than put it round me. And tonight, watching television at home, schoolgirl Claire Gordon, like her friends, home safe. There were stories of remarkable heroism. Philip Wells, who is handicapped, was saved by teacher Sam Muirfield and sixth former Rick Elms. Rick Elms saved my life so many times. How did he save your life? What did he do? Well, he, he, I swam a few paces, a few yards perhaps, and then suddenly he grabbed me and swam across with me. And then suddenly I looked up and saw the boat sinking. I just don't imagine that sort of thing. Rick at home in Upminster seems slightly embarrassed by the fuss. He wants to join the police. I feel like anybody else who was in the situation, that they did what had to be done. And you, f you feel good in yourself that you were able to help. But you've got to remember that there was everybody all helping each other. Team effort. For all the parents, it has been an agonising 24 hours. At this Manchester school, they waited to hear of the children and staff from here who were on the trip. They kept the tea brewing and late into the night the phone rang. All was safe, though two children were treated for shock and the school nurse has leg injuries. I think I did half a bottle of scotch last night and 200 fags. It was that sort of thing. Absolutely. And, of course, um, you know that relief? I mean, we got a phone call from Greece at 1 o'clock this morning from the, the lady from the shipping lines that says, your daughter's safe. <sighs> My God. And tonight in Manchester, their waiting is finally over. Some proudly showed off their battle scars, this boy trip jumping on a rescue tug. While one little lad couldn't hold back his tears. Jackets and we didn't have them. What's it like to be back with your mum? I'm proud. 
So for these families, the waiting is over. 14-year-old Vivian Barley was on her first cruise. She'd been looking forward to her eight days on board the Jupiter. Last night, her parents saw these pictures of survivors on News at 10 and thought they'd seen Vivian amongst them. We saw a girl come up the gangplank behind, or a few seconds behind Andrew, and we all said, that's Viv. Um, we were fairly convinced at that point. The hairstyle, the clothing, the, the shape of the face, everything. It was a brief glimpse. It was enough to convince us at that time that, that all was well. But when they were woken and told by police that their daughter was still missing, they viewed all last night's pictures again and realised they'd made a mistake. It wasn't Vivian getting off the boat. She's been seen by a friend who knows her very well, who was on the, the cruise with her, uh, who has said yes, she was in the water, she was swimming. That is the last we've heard. Tonight, Vivian's school friends were among those flown back to Manchester Airport, an otherwise happy return home, marred by fears for their classmate still missing in Greece. The Greek island's ferry leaves Piraeus harbour this evening, following the same course as the ill-fated Jupiter just 24 hours earlier, as the rescue operation here is wound down. Small boats mark the position of the sunken liner. The authorities have now given up hope of finding the one missing passenger alive. The rescued passengers were given a police escort to Athens airport, where four jets had been flown from Britain to carry them home. Many of the children were still wearing blankets, clothes and other possessions lost with the sunken ship. From some angry accusations that the crew of the doomed ship left them to their fate. The crew deserves us. The boat started tipping and we, like, we went upstairs and like, the boat was slanting and everyone was just panicking and running off. What is certain is that many of the young Britons owe their lives to the local seamen and the fleet of small boats that turned out to help the stricken liner. The accusations that crew had deserted passengers were today strongly denied by the owners of the sunken liner. We are very pleased with the way our crew acted with the accident. We are very pleased with the way the whole, every service in the port of Piraeus was coordinated properly. Sentiments echoed by a visiting British minister. I think the first reaction is the view that this could have been a very great tragedy indeed, but for all the skill and courage that was shown by many of the people concerned with the ship, by the rescue services, uh, and not least by the teachers, and perhaps above all, the children. Piraeus is a busy port, but visibility was good yesterday evening. There's no explanation as to why the Italian cargo ship collided with the Jupiter. The captain of the Italian freighter, who was arrested last night, has now been charged with manslaughter. His damaged vessel will remain in Piraeus Harbour while the police investigation continues. Paul Davis, ITN, Athens. According to independent observers, Iripo Tiki, who operate the Jupiter, seen here leaving Piraeus Harbour, have a good safety record. Today, the cruise organisers, schools abroad, said they were satisfied about safety on the ship. They said seamen jumped into the sea clutching life jackets, not to abandon passengers in distress, but to help children already in the water without life jackets. At the time of the collision, many children were in the upper deck lounge for a safety lecture that was never delivered. Many others were in a lower deck dining room ready for dinner. Jupiter left the busy port of Piraeus at five to six last night. 20 minutes later, it was half a mile outside the harbor when the Italian vessel Adige, approaching from the south, was in collision. There is a certain conflict between the, the tracks, that is the courses that are taken by cruise ships and uh, they tend to be cut across by cargo ships. Um, but I don't know that that is a fact, but it wouldn't surprise me if this is what happened. Emergency drills have been carried out on the Jupiter, and today the Greek Prime Minister reacted angrily to allegations of safety lapses. He blamed the captain of the Italian ship for the collision. It was not a question of overcrowded shipping lanes. It was a question of a captain not knowing what he was doing. So you're saying it was one individual's negligence? Yes, indeed. The Italian shipping ministry said the freighter was stationary at the time and didn't hit the Jupiter. It was Jupiter that hit a DJ. Mr Papandreou promised a full public inquiry. 
We have more now on the missing teacher from the Jupiter ship. He's Mr. Bernard Butt from the T.P. Riley Community College in Walsall in the West Midlands. A few minutes ago, his headmaster spoke. Um, the pupils obviously are hardly in a fit condition to talk very much about what they say they have seen. All we know is that several of them say that he helped them out of the boat following the accident and was last seen by them helping children out of the boat, as is typical. Uh, since then, there is simply no information. And obviously, we are very, very concerned. And a teacher are missing tonight in Greece as the hundreds who survived the sinking ship return home. And one sixth former tells how he rescued a disabled man. Nicaragua's president warns we're facing disaster after Hurricane Joan and breaking the ice to save the whales, but one of them may be dead. Good evening. A British teacher is unaccounted for tonight, 24 hours after a Greek liner sank. Concern is growing at a school near Walsall for Mr Bernard Butt, who hasn't been seen since last night. And all hope is now fading for 14-year-old Vivian Barley from Sutton Coldfield. The Greek authorities are presuming she's dead, but her parents are still hoping. The last we know is that Viv was seen uh, in the water swimming. <coughs> Excuse me. In the water swimming. Uh, she can swim, she can swim well. She's been seen by a friend who knows her very well, who was on the, the cruise with her, uh, who has said, yes, she was in the water, she was swimming. That is the last we've heard. The survivors, many of them still suffering from shock, began arriving back in England early this afternoon. Some of them have been talking about the rescue and about individual acts of courage. The bravery, for example, of a sixth form boy who kept a disabled man afloat till help arrived. The survivors were flown back in specially chartered planes. The first of the airlift flights landed at Gatwick, the authorities deliberately shielding the survivors from the cameras. The customs formalities were minimal, then the police escorted three coaches across the airport with their blinds drawn. At Stansted, less trouble was taken to hide the children. Some were still wrapped in blankets. Many showed the shock and strain of the past 24 hours. They carried what possessions they'd been rescued with in identical Greek shoulder bags. And some relations managed to take their welcome home onto the tarmac. Other anxious parents had to wait a little longer. At Gaines School in Upminster, all the worry, the emotion and the tears surfaced as parents were reunited with their children. No one quite believes their loved ones are safe until they see for themselves. Tonight, the last of the survivors reached Manchester. Several were nursing leg injuries that needed medical assistance. It just went down vertical. It turned. Yeah, it, turned, it was going over that way, and then suddenly it just ploughed straight in. Somebody said, like, the Titanic. Yes, it was. It was horrific, and we saw it go down slow motion, and there's just nothing you could do. Can we get your name? Philip Wells, a disabled teacher, was pulled out of the sea, exhausted. He'd been rescued by a complete stranger, a young sixth former. Earlier, his wife described his ordeal. Oh, my husband's disabled. He couldn't stay with us. We, we tried to keep together, but we had to leave him behind. But he, he was saved. What, a boy we don't know, a sixth former, when they f were in the water, he kept him a, afloat and saved his life. I wish I could find him. I don't know who he was. This was the mystery hero. His name is Rickwood Elms from Gaines School. And this afternoon, he told me how he helped Mr. Wells struggle to safety. And from then, I just sort of swam with him till to, to we got picked up. How long was that for? No idea. <laughs> long time, so it seemed, but I don't know. In what sort of state was he? He was pretty good. He was really calm and he was helpful. They were trying to get him up onto a tug but they couldn't pull him up because the tug was too high. So I took him 